The King is back. The King of Stopping Power, the 357 Magnum. I haven't done a video with 357 Magnum through my four inch barrel Smith and Weston 686 in a long time. So we're gonna test some Sig Sauer V Crown, 125 grain jack at a hollow point. This stuff is rated at 1450 feet per second, 593 foot pounds energy. That's real typical for your typical 357 Magnum. And to compare to that, I'm going to compare to some Sig Sauer Elite Defense with our 9mm. Both of these are V-Crowns, and um, this happens to just be standard pressure, and that's all that Sig offers in ammo like this, is standard pressure. Uh, this is rated at uh, 1165 feet per second, I believe. I'm trying to read the side of the box. And that's actually a pretty stout ammo for what it is. The only time I've ever tested that was through my 3-inch Diamondback DB9. I was getting almost rated velocity out of that. It felt very stout, so I've been curious for a long time if i test it in something like a larger gun what would we get there so smith and wesson 686 four four inch barrel and then we have our smith and wesson mp9 with our five inch barrel we got about the same amount of bullet travel overall so 124 grain versus 125 grain we'll see how those compare so i'm gonna go through the chronograph see what kind of velocity and accuracy i get at the same time and then i'm gonna do my 10 percent clear ballistic test i'm just gonna go straight into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential is of those cartridges and then after that i'm gonna put on four layers of denim up here in the first part of this uh Clear ballistics, first three inch chunk here that represents our pectoral muscle. After that, we're going to have a quarter inch medium density fiber board that represents ribs or sternum. That'll be more of our real world simulation. Then I'm going to shoot up my steel, see what kind of practical shootability and accuracy I can get with those. So well, let's get started with this test. All right, first up, we have our nine millimeter rated at 1165 feet per second. Let's see if we get on my five inch barrel here. I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. Twelve oh nine, eleven eighty nine. I'll read twelve ten, twelve eleven, eleven ninety one. So very consistent, hitting, hitting just a little bit to the right for me, out of my pistol, but really good velocity for standard pressure. Three fifty seven Magnum, rated at fourteen fifty feet per second. See what I get out of my four inch Smith & Wesson 686 here. I'll read. Fourteen fifteen. Fourteen oh three. Fourteen ninety one. Fourteen seventy three. So a little bit below rated velocity. But still, that's pretty good velocity. It's in the range of a normal 357 mag. So let's have our ballistics gel block, see how these compare. All right, we're gonna do our best potential here. Plain clear ballistics, nine millimeters, see what this does. All right, let's hit that with our 357 Magnum. We'll take a look. All right, so I'm going to be honest here. Both did really, really good here. Um, you know, I'm skeptical of 9mm a lot of the times because the way it expands often is that it goes in a, a good amount of distance and then it starts expanding, kind of parachuting out. So in gel, it often looks fantastic with the bullet. And what I've noticed with rounds that have, quote unquote, higher stopping power, it seems like the bullets are expanding right away. And what I'm seeing with this nine millimeter is the bullet expanding right away. Huge amount of energy dump, nearly as good as that 357 Magnum. And generally that will indicate that you're going to have higher quote unquote stopping power. So we have a lot of tearing and ripping right here, right away. And we penetrated to 17 inches. We definitely have some good expansion. Our 357 mag did kind of the same thing a little bit more energy dump and then a little tiny bit more up here and definitely a little more damage when it came to rest right at i mean we're right there at 18 inches 18 and a half something like that so both of these are 
are doing quite well. So let's put on our denim and our MDF and see how they compare that way. All right, four layers of denim, which can clog a hollow point and reduce its expansion, maybe cause over penetration. Our MDF can kind of cause that too. So let's see what we get here with our nine millimeter. Four layers of denim, quarter inch MDF. All right. All right, let's go above that with our 357 Magnum. Let's go take a look. All right, so this surprised me for the fact that uh, both over penetrated, but with that 357 mag, that's very, very, very rare to see that kind of over penetration even going through the MDF. And it's just very interesting because we can see, you know, with our nine millimeter, we had some controlled expansion, but it does look like that bullet there really, really was affected by that denim. And let me grab one of those hollow points and show that. And with that 357 mag, I thought this was weird from the beginning. There's not a very deep hollow point. It only goes down in there about a quarter inch and this comes to a, a rest on some flat lead there. That is really weird design, I thought, when I first saw that. So I could definitely see that filling up completely. Four layers of denim would fill that to the top. So I thought that was weird when I first saw that. But what we got there with our 357 mag is a penetration of 26 and a half inches so you know it got some expansion when there's no clogging it doesn't you know when the, the hollow points clog that would probably make it a good woods round but probably not the best <laughs> self-defense round now obviously we have to look at that that is a huge amount of damage that's probably from tumbling because the bullets backwards huge amount of damage going on in there so you know that still accounts for something I'm not saying this would be ineffective at all but we just got some over penetration now with our nine millimeter yeah we can definitely see we have actual expansion and cutting right here and we went to about 22 inches we have just a tiny amount of expansion our hollow point on this is our typical v crown kind of a weird design it's got a little hole in the middle there so different bullet designs for sure so let me shoot the steel see what kind of practical accuracy i can get with these all right, looking at these bullets here, our 9mm expanded quite well, did a lot of damage, did a lot of tearing damage. It dumped the energy quite well, so I would say that's probably a decent round. And when we look at through our MDF, yeah, we had a little bit of a clog of denim here that went all the way with the bullet, but it did not impede that expansion. So overall, that 9mm through that 5-inch barrel anyway did pretty well. Our 357 Magnum, we have really excellent expansion here with our plain gel shot. Instant expansion, a whole lot of tearing and everything going on. Now with our 357 mag through our four layers of denim and quarter inch MDF, just like I thought, that tiny little hollow cavity there is clogged with denim. So if I could try to peel this out, you know, I can take a look here, see what that looks like. Very hard pack of denim in there. There's one layer. It's hard to even get these layers out here. But yeah, I'm already to the lead, so it's not like that was like a false base that goes in. It's it's a very solid, hard, you know, area that's not even a quarter inch. I mean, probably not even an eighth inch in there. So kind of a questionable hollow point why they have it designed that way. So that's a look at those bullets up close. All right, I decided to try 15 yards from the target. Let's see what I can get for practical shootability with these. So those are kind of stout, honestly, for being a standard pressure. Let's see what our 357 does. All right, so shifting a little bit low. Case ejection with these is really, really good, at least out of the 686. Um, and, and this is kind of going the other way. It's 4357 mag, it's kind of mild. So that's something there. Let me back it up a little bit. See if I can make some more shots on steel from a little more distance. 
All right, 40 yards from the target, why not? Not really a dick and drill, but just kind of seeing what these will do for me from 40 yards. So let's see what this will do, our nine millimeter. So I'm going to say our 9mm is pretty good. Let me go for a headshot. I'll probably miss it, but why not? Ooh. So I'll double down on what I was about to say. seems like our 9mm is very accurate at that distance. You know, it seems like it shot just a little bit right at close range. That could just be me, but once I back it up a little bit, it seems like our accuracy is really, really, really good. 357 Magnum. Got to put some more rounds in here. Those load really nice, too. See what these will do. Oh, I pulled it. For some reason, these are shooting a little bit off from where I'm aiming, obviously, because it's just that that, that should have been an impact. Let me aim a little bit high. They were impacting low at close range. So, I believe that's six. Yep, case ejection. That, that's one thing that impressed me about this, is case ejection and loading was really easy. When I put that loader on there, barely touched it, and they just dropped in with no friction whatsoever. So the fact that they're not up there to the rate of velocity, that's kind of what makes them like that, because the cases are not expanding. I would have rather them have that velocity though, because it seems like that really did affect its terminal ballistics because you know, it is extraordinarily rare. In fact, I don't know if I've ever seen it before where I've had a failed expansion on a 357 Magnum hollow point bullet moving at 1400 feet per second. I don't think I've ever seen that before until today. But when you look at that bullet design, it's obvious why. It's not really even a hollow cavity. So once that fills with denim, this doesn't matter what you do there's not enough pressure on, on kind of the lips of that hollow point opening for it to ever get expansion so i could see how that could be a thing the only way somebody could get around that is if it was like maybe it was such a soft lead that it would mushroom regardless but they didn't do that now with our nine millimeter here it's kind of interesting here i would say for a standard pressure it's very very good one of the better standard pressures we that I've seen. Playing gel did excellent. Through our MDF and denim did quite excellent too. And what I'm seeing with accuracy really plays into this as well because the 686 is my most accurate handgun. If I'm gonna hit something at distance, if I'm gonna group one whole groups, I'm gonna do it with my 686, even double action. And this ammo really drifted low for me, which is really weird, even at five yards, that was really weird. And at distance, it's drifting low enough that I'm missing my target, where other ammo, 125 grain full power, would not do that. But our 9mm was extraordinarily accurate. So between the two of these here, I would say that this 9mm is a little bit better choice. Not that the 357 is bad. I mean, it still did pretty well. It still did a lot of damage. I think it would be a very good round for stopping a threat, even if it overpenetrated, because it hits with so much energy. But, you know, the, the accuracy being a little bit off, kind of questionable to me, so. That's what you get today with that. You know, I think there's better 357 Magnum. There's better 9mm for that matter, too. But the 9mm seems to be decent overall. And the 357 Mag is just a little below decent. It's not the worst thing I've seen, uh, but it's okay. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.